Good morning landscape lovers, I'm Felix from Hologon and today we'll take a look at Landshape's user interface and its different parts. So when you first install and start Landshape, what you'll see is something like this. Here is the getting started toolbar and it contains a select few basic operations and tools and commands that you can use to create beautiful landscapes. For instance, you'll get to the left, here you'll get plot, and with plot you can simply draw a rectangle like so. If you hold hold alt while plotting, you can get a quake plot like so, and press enter to see if you get something you like. Let's say I like this result. You can add a skirt and start playing around with this like so. But uh, yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, what I really wanted to show is the interface. If you look at these things, you can see that all these icons have a small visual index to their lower right, and some also to the lower left. And what do these mean? These have specific meanings. Let's look at that in more detail. One thing we notice is that in the upper right corner we see something like this. This is an overlay, we call it the Landshape Guide, and here we can see uh, not just the name of the software, but also the current edition here, Light, and the current version number, 0 0.9.0. .0. You can also see how many terrain faces you currently got in your model, and also the upper limit, the face limit, which is determined by the addition here, light or 50,000 faces. If we use different tools, and now I can turn on, for instance, let's turn on hidden edges so we see a little bit better. Now, if I activate plot, you will see that the guide will now turn, tell us for instance, the resolution. So if I draw something over here, like so, now I can, I can type the dimensions and also the resolutions on the fly. So let's say I want this 200 by 100 by uh, meters, and I want a resolution of four meters. I will type this, or maybe I change my mind. I want just 180 times, mm, let's say 80 times 2 enter and as soon as as long as i'm in the command and i've just typed something like so then it will react this works this is microparametric uh, editing so it works within the command just like push pull or draw um like the line tool or many other operations in native sketchup okay and note here that when we added this terrain, the number of the face count has got up to about 6, 17, 18,000. Okay. Now I can delete this like so. And let's look at some other parts. Up here among the icons, we start with the panel. And the panel is a collection of of most or many of the parameters that are driving these different operations. So if we open the panel just briefly, let's see here, we can see for instance that the resolution we set is two and this resolution will be global so it will be used by the other commands as well. There are other settings here as well. We won't look at them at the moment. This is, this is a general overview. Now, one thing we can note is that these icons, all of them, have a small visual index in their lower right corner, here. So here we see an eye, here we see some sort of rhomboid form, here some sort of drawn S. So what does that mean? Let's look at this in some more detail. So the different indices, they determine what type of command it is, what class it is. These are all of the same kind, 
Okay, these were the, little, the pick commands with the little rhomboid. And these are the brush commands. They're all brushes. These are all view commands. Okay, so for instance, to make this a bit more clear, uh, the pick commands, they enable you to interact with the terrain or create terrain via control geometry that exists in SketchUp. For instance, to create some terrain, I can use isocurves here, and I can also create a filter. And then I can use these to drive the terrain input. So for instance, let's look at the first pick command, which is form. I hover form and it says create new terrain by selection. Okay, so either I can pre-select this and create the terrain. Let's see if that works. I pre-select this one and click form. Does it work? It's computing and now it's done. It seemed to work. Let's try that again. So this time I will select I will not pre-select, I will first run the form and then now Landshape enters a pick face and you can tell by the cursor, you can also tell by the status text, it says pick. Click or drag to select inputs, well let's do that. I can drag and here I selected the isocurves and we got a rectangular rim but note that you can select many things so i can also select this this perimeter which i have prepared and it's a closed path so i select i hold shift and i select a second input and now i've selected two inputs one contour group and a closed path which will act as a filter an area filter so now if I'm ready to, to proceed, what do I do? Well, I double click or enter. Let's click enter and see what happens. So now Landshape is computing and the output will be this. If I hide the selected input, it's clearer. Now I created a terrain along the contours, following the contours, but filtered by the filter I created. So I get this nice outline. There are several other pick commands. There are quite a few of them and some of them are quite powerful. Now let's just look at some. Here is road. So if I turn on the tag for the road input which is a center light and note that this is the road center line and note that you can have this input above like now or below the terrain, Landshape doesn't care, okay? Uh, it cares where it is in the X, Y position in the plane. Now I put the center line a bit above the terrain so that I can see more clearly what happens with the terrain when I run road. And normally, if you know where you're going, you're typ you will typically pre-select the input geometry, then run the command. In this case, I will first run road, enter the pick face, pick the input geometry, and now I will run the command. So I'll, pick, I'll click enter, like so. It will compute for a bit. And here's the road. And I can see that the width is six meters. Maybe I want it narrower. So I will type two meters, like so enter and landscape will calculate and this was very narrow indeed if i type 12 see what happens landscape will calculate and here we go get up this is more like a almost like a freeway no i think six meters was just right so let's keep it six meters okay like so and now i can turn off the input tag like so, and our road is good to go. To sum up, what these pick commands have in common is that they enable you to interact with the terrain 
through control geometry. And this control geometry can be an edge, a triangle, a point cloud, more or less anything, as long as it is geometry in SketchUp and it should also be grouped. That is what all these have in common. Okay, and some of them do special things, so some let you interact with the geometry, the control geometry itself, and some use the control geometry uh, to interact with the terrain. So to get a better grasp of what these commands do, you can just hover, if you're at least if you're on Windows, above the different icons and read the text. Okay, and the text, the tooltip text will let you know on a high level what the command does. But there are also other types of commands, as we can see. So we can see there's this, there's this little uh, real here. And this is, a, this is a draw command. And these works work in a different way. They don't use control uh, input groups to drive the result, they work in a different way. So for instance, if we look at draw, this is the quintessential draw tool, it enables you to draw on the terrain. So let's try that. Turn off hidden edges. I click draw. And now here, we can simply draw on the terrain like so. And this enables us to draw something like this and now we've got a perimeter here that we can use for various things for instance we can color the terrain and so on so what do the other draw the commands do fill paint it says paint zone terrain zone by material okay so a zone is a continuous area with one and the same material. Okay, so let's try that. So if we bring up a swatch with different colors, so here it is, we can hold Alt on a Windows machine and sample, and then we can go here and paint the area. Maybe we want a darker area behind the road. We'll use another material, we'll sample it, and we'll click just like so, okay? So this does not interact with the terrain through input groups. You interact directly with the terrain. All these little things, these commands that have these little, uh, the draw uh, index. And then we have this kind of command, and these are the brushes, okay? level brush, bank brush, and so on. So if I, for instance, select the grab brush, again, with these, you interact directly with the terrain. You do not need any control geometry. So this is more for free form work. Uh, it's more artistically expressive. So let's make this a little bit smaller, like so. And here we can create a hill, for instance, like so. Or maybe we can do a depression here, like so. There are many things you can do with these uh, brushes. Uh, one common thing is to make things flat. So for this, I'll use the level brush. I will zoom in. This is really useful, actually. I will sample a height. Let's sample a height on the building itself. There. Okay. And now I'll make it a little bit smaller. And now I can simply draw that plane like so. I'll need a higher strength, about 100%. And now we can draw the plane, like so. And this plane, now I make sure that the house is on a plane. So these are these are two different ways of working with, uh, uh, with, the, with the terrain. You can either paint, and this is more freeform, more expressive, and perhaps and a, list, a little bit less uh, precise. That's one way of doing it. And the other way is like you could you could have a plane here and do a, a fit and a blend to make the terrain go to that plane. Uh, so two different ways of interacting with uh, the terrain. And here are the fourth 
type of commands, namely the view commands, and they control visibility of terrain properties and also of entities around the terrain. So for instance, if I select the click the first one, I will toggle between top parallel and tilt perspective. Let's try that in practice. And here I can see it from the top. I click that again and I go back to my previous perspective. Okay. And these two, they turn the visibility of the non-terrain and the terrain entities on and off by tag. So let's look at that. If I turn on a tag with trees like so, and I click on this one, I can toggle the visibility of the built entities and the trees, which are on a different tag, on and off. And this is useful if I want to go in and edit the terrain in parts that are occluded uh, by these uh, groups. Okay, and the same goes, you can do the vice versa. So you can have the non-terrain visible and hide the terrain by its tag. And this is useful if you want to edit, say, the basement of your building. Some of the view commands, for instance, skirt, they have a parameter. So if I click skirt, I can manually type in the height of the skirt. Let's go for four meters and you'll see this got a little bit thicker like that. I can turn on and off edges, uh, smoothness. I can turn on and off um, profiles and contours. So let's try contours, see how that works. So I'd click on contour and landscape things for a bit. And here you can also type in, I think half a meter is a better spacing uh, in this case. There we go. Okay. The last part of the toolbars uh, is the survey. And currently there aren't, the, there is only one survey command and uh, there will be more. Let's break out these toolbars before we finish so we can see them one by one. To save space, I keep them docked. But if we, if I break them out, this is what we get. We get the main toolbar, the brush toolbar, the view toolbar, and here is the survey. And here we can survey the elevation and the local slope at different points, like so. There are more survey commands forthcoming. By the way, I should mention that all of the commands are available at right click. So if you right click anything in the model, like so, you can go to land shape. And here you've got all the main commands, the brushes, the survey tools, uh, the import and the prop. And here in prop, we put commands that are useful, but are perhaps either not used as often, but they sure have their place. And here's the uh, view items. And that wraps up our foray into Landshape's user interface. I encourage you to play around because there are more nuances and features to discover. So one way to do so to discover and explore is to create a sort of fantasy model where it doesn't matter if things go a bit, shall we say, out of the ordinary um, and to get them to know the tools a little bit better. If you've got questions, leave us a comment and there will be more videos forthcoming about more aspects of the interface and other features in Landshape. Thank you very much.